Um, yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Ramya. I'm currently a master's student at University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Um, so today I'll be presenting towards modern development of cloud applications, it's, which is a paper by Google. It's a pretty simple paper. Um, it tries to build a new programming uh, paradigm. So we'll just get to what's the crux of the paper and um, yeah, what like what what they're trying to achieve. So microservices have always been popular, especially in the context of distributed application. Um, conventionally, everyone wants to split their application into uh, different so independent services and roll them out independently. Um, so this is what a microservice architecture is. And there is a huge debate whether one should follow a monolith, um, monolith architecture or a microservice-based architecture. Um, especially after Prime Video moved their monitoring service application back into a monolith. Um, I think this has further grown into a huge debate. Um, so why would someone want, why would someone champion the use of a microservice um, architecture? Um, so what are the advantages? So one, the performance. Um, Binaries can be rolled out independently, probably better resource utilization. Now you could also say flexible rollouts because you have different uh, independent components. You can independently scale, independently roll out each component. Uh, fault tolerance, if you have your blast radius under control, um, if even if one microservice crashes, the availability of your system is, is not hindered. Um, and also provides uh, abstraction boundaries. That is, they make clear and explicit APIs and the chance of your um, entanglement of code is minimized. But what are the disadvantages? One, performance is severely hurt because now there is serializing data which leads to network overhead. Um, you cannot really ensure correctness during rolling upgrades. Different versions uh, can interact with each other. Manageability is hard. Um, you would rather want to manage one single binary rather than uh, thinking about managing uh, many independent components. Um, now, application development as a whole is bogged down because um, now you're managing in different microservices rather than just building out one single binary. So if I'm referring to binary, it's also, I would say, it's just one service. One single binary, I would, I'm would i calling it like a monolith-based architecture. When I say microservices or n binaries, I'm, um, I'm talking about a microservice-based or n service independently uh, rolling out based architecture. Um, so yeah, and then it also leads to uh, freezing APIs in the sense um, it becomes hard to change an API considering there, there are other N minus one microservices um, talking to this uh, my, talking to this service you are changing. So there are legacy APIs which probably do not undergo development further and new, AP, new APIs you're building band-aids over. Um, so we still don't know what are, whether these disadvantages outlay the advantages of uh, a microservice-based architecture. We do not know what are the trade-offs. We do not probably understand um, the whole cloud environment space. Um, so this this paper tries to address uh, some of these uh, some of these difficulties, some of these um, disadvantages. So one might ask, there, there are a few frameworks which probably address these disadvantages. Say for instance, the continuous development deployment frameworks, um, they definitely address these challenges. However, pro they do not really address the version, uh, the correctness during version interactions. Um, so most of these existing frameworks try to just ease these disadvantages, but do not really solve them. So where do they fall short? Uh, one primary assumption, that they make is that the application developer wants to split their application into different microservices, that an application developer will take care of these multiple microservices that they're building, um, and that they will take care of the 
full deployment managing um, of these microservices that they will probably be independently rolling out. So one, this assumption leads to the tight coupling nature of the application code and the physical boundaries that is where you want to deploy uh, where you want to deploy your code. Um, all of these frameworks make the assumption that these are tightly coupled. They do not disintegrate this application logic from uh, the physical boundary that is uh, the cloud interactions. Um, the other assumption is that all of these binaries or most of these microservices are individually rolled out rather than an atomic rollout of, um, of the service as a whole or the application as a whole. Um, so what are these assumptions inherently leading to that the application develop, developer handles most of the cross binary protocols or the correctness, the, like the handling of legacy APIs and these um, the existing frameworks just provide um, a way to uh, uh, just ease ease the work of an application developer by providing probably um, easier way to handle APIs, but none of them uh, talk about how to handle cross binary protocols, etc. Um, so how does um, so how what does this paper propose? Uh, this paper tries to handle the above mentioned disadvantages of uh, microservices by saying, okay, now do not release your micro your application as a microservice, but rather write it as a single binary. Rather write uh, your monolith, um, write your application as a monolith based architecture, but modularize it internally as different components. Run then have a runtime to dynamically uh, assign logical components to these processes based on some characteristics and do not independently roll out these components, rather um, deploy your applications atomically. Um, so in this is probably how you can visualize. You have a microservice-based architecture of component A, B, C, but now this is modularized into one monolith, say component A, B, C, and then you have a runtime um, overlooking these components, runtime deciding how these components should be placed, where should the deployment of these components happen, how do, what should be the rollout scenario of these components, that is what the runtime handles. The runtime is for building, deploying, and optimizing these applications in inherently the components of your application, but providing for atomic rollouts and not um, individual rollouts um, of each of these components. Um, um, yeah. So what are the advantages of such a paradigm where instead of now having a microservice-based architecture, the paper propagates or champions the use of um, a monolith-based architect, monolith-based release scenario where you just have a single binary. Um, they say this gives you the flexibility to change APIs because now everything is a single binary. There's just one atomic rollout um, and you're not worried about where this deployment is, how this deployment is taking place. So you have the flexibility to go change the API rather than worrying about your N minus one other interactions because now everything is just one release it's an atomic rollout um and because it's an atomic rollout you also have you do not you also are guaranteed correctness because now you do not really interact with um with components which probably are running different versions um however the paper still talks about like if you're relied on some persistent storage for some uh for reading and writing some kind of data and in it could happen that two nodes are running to diff, um, have inconsistency in their persistent storage. But as a whole, if a version schema, like a schema on two different, um, like because it's an atomic rollout, you, you are guaranteed correctness because the version or the schema will be the same uh, for, more, for all of these components and you're guaranteed um, version correctness for, um, for component interaction. So now you're by the application developer 
doesn't have to worry about optimizations of um, uh, of the deployment scenario. That is, he doesn't, the application developer doesn't have to worry about how to execute cloud interactions optimally, how to place the components optimally. Now you're offloading all of that management to a runtime. Now runtime can run optimizations probably if you want to run some custom um custom serialization uh, for uh, for your data for uh, during network calls, runtime can do it. Now, an application developer, your code, your application code, your single binary release doesn't really have to take care of these uh, um, optimization. Um, single binary is easier to manage than uh, having multiple releases for individual components. Um, and because there's only single binary release, and you're not relied upon your n minus one other microservices releases. You you're bound to have faster application development. Mm. So this is the advantage of the new paradigm. So in brief, again, it is you have instead of the paper champions again the use of a monolith based uh, kind of release where you where you combine all your Microsoft all this all your comp into one release and you have a runtime deploying optimizing and executing um these different applications or components um so now this is what the programming model looks like now you have an application same a b c um now your runtime handles if these components have to be co-located co-located means they run on the same machine um or if it has to be replicated and be located on another machine. So here A and B are co-located. Um, um, A and B are co-located while C is not uh, co-located. So there is an RPC call for um, from for an interaction from component A to component C, whereas it's just a network RPC from A to C, whereas it's just um, a local call from uh, a to B. Um, um, yeah. However, um, now that you now that our application code doesn't really handle most of the um, uh, logic of uh, deploying, optimizing these, um, uh, optimizing the code on the cloud or a node. There should be an environment uh, agnostic daemon which runs, um, which tells the application um, how to co-locate or how to run or how the interactions between uh, different um, uh, different components need to take place. And this is what is a proclet. So the caller, essentially, um, this is an application binary which is linked to your um sorry this is um a daemon which is linked to your, linked to your application binary um and it decides if your components have to start stop restart on failure um so um so it's essentially like because your applications do not include any code which are specific to this environment they're deployed in um they need to support an integration of or across machines or other on premise clusters or public cloud and the api which does this is called a proclet and proclet has a parent process called an envelope and envelope uh, monitors the proclet and um, collects information about metrics logging etc um so so the proclet, so the, the runtime decides where the proclets have to run. So you still have a global manager, um, which decides where the proclets have to run. Uh, the proclet, so there is a set of envelope processes here that communicate uh, directly with the proclets via Unix pipes and a global manager that executes these proclets. Essentially, just think that proclets are environment agnostic demons um which um which is assigned to your component in a 
running binary with uh, basically again because your applications do not include any code specific to the environment in which they're deployed but they must be ultimately run on a specific environment proclets make this possible proclets make it possible for your component to be run on a particular environment but they have an envelope process which is a parent process um which manages the proclet um yeah so any questions with this okay um moving ahead again so you just have a global manager you have uh, envelopes which interact with the global manager and envelope is a parent process of the proclet proclet is environment uh, aware now whereas your components are not at all environment aware your components are just handling your business logic so your runtime now handles all your control plane operations of um whether the whether uh, where the component has to run what uh, what is the logic that the components uh, how to optimize these components and how the interactions should take place um whereas proclets now determine um the end like make the core make the component aware of the environment um so yeah now the now how since we do not want to sub since the paper does not want to support um cross version does not want to support um cross version upgrades that is it doesn't want to have um it doesn't want to have it tries to avoid cross version interactions in the sense it does in in a system, it wants to ensure that all the binaries are running the same version. Um, so all of this is possible only through an atomic rollout. How do they ensure that an atomic rollout is possible? They talk about one possible pop implementation they talk about is a blue-green implementation where you switch entirely from uh, one version to another. Say if your request is in a lower version, you make sure that the request is completed in that lower version before moving to the uh, higher version. So they do not support rolling upgrades. It, they, they champion the use of um, atomic uh, rollouts. Um, so what is the other advantage of uh, this kind of uh, a paradigm is now your runtime has a complete view into your application uh, execution. So you can further optimize performance you can uh, you can make wiser decisions of um, where your components have to be placed so uh, if you want your component a and component b if if the component a and component b have a lot more interaction compared to component a and component c you can think about co-locating component a and component b so, and this is possible because now you have a higher level view of your application um, through runtime and runtime is what makes it possible. Um, and yeah, so transport placement, scaling, um, decisions are further um, transitioned into your runtime. So now because your runtime has a bird's eye view of your application, it makes it possible for you to make wiser, most optimal decisions. Again, the paper doesn't get into details of their runtime implementation. Um, but yeah, they just talk about how their runtime implementation should have every runtime implementation should have a proclet, which is, uh, which should be environment, uh, agnostic, um, and have an envelope probably logging, uh, these metrics and further, um, and further a code generator to handle your network calls, basically generating your stubs, et cetera. Um, then yeah so now going ahead with the evaluation the pa the paper this um so this implement this fully implemented in go they have a custom um serialization and a custom transport protocol built directly over tcp um and the prototype they built also uses the google kubernetes engine uh, which supports multiple region deployments with the blue green deployment rollout. It further has horizontal pod autoscalers. Um, yeah, so and this is an 
open source code implementation at call service weaver so however um they used an online application called online boutique which uses which just has 10000 lines of code and has 11 microservices um and this is their um average they talk about how their average number of uh, cores has reduced from 78 to 28 uh and their median latency was reduced from 5.47 and 2.2 2.6 milliseconds um and they've not made collocation possible in any of these uh, scenarios uh, in any of their evaluation scenarios but yeah um they also talk about how their most of this um improvement is primarily because of their atomic rollouts that is they because they have a custom serialization which is designed for non date non version data exchange which leads to their um, performance improvement um so so the serialization format it does not require any type of encoding or any type of information because all the encoders and decoders on uh, on different on uh, on between on the two components that are interacting are running the same exact version so inherently they make the assumption that um the set of fields and order is already agreed upon um and because they're using this non version data exchange is what they think leads to their performance improvement um yeah so this is it um they so the paper just champions the use of a monolith based release a single binary release atomic rollout and have a runtime which has a bird's eye view of your application um so you can optimize how your um components have to interact where your components have to be placed and probably use different serialization formats for um or different messaging formats based on the information that you gather from runtime on how these components interact um yeah so now we can get into the discussion All right so um I'm going to stop the recording now